Hello everybody, I am Lele and I am here with the wonderful Joe Williamson. If you can introduce yourself, Joe. Uh, hi, I'm Joe. I am an independent game developer. I do code, art, music, sound, uh, pretty much a bit of everything. Uh, most recently I released Werewolf Tycoon and I'm largely doing freelance while working on some of my own projects at the moment. That's cool. So, we're just going to start with a few questions uh, and everything like that. So, how old are you? Uh, 25. Nice. Uh, so, Werewolf Tycoon is a actually very popular Android iPhone app game and it's been pretty much growing like wildfire I guess you can say but so what inspired you to create this game uh, pretty much it was based on just a picture that I drew before university of just the uh, bush with a couple of eyes peeking out uh, and a lamppost and a big moon in the background uh, with no real idea for what the game would be at that point um, but late in uni um, I showed it to a friend and we decided that at some point we were going to turn that into a game, whatever that would be. And that happened to be a couple of weeks before Halloween and we decided that we were going to try and throw together a game in two weeks for Halloween, which didn't quite end up happening in the end. But uh, pretty much we had a brainstorming session on the phone and turned into Werewolf Tycoon. question uh since it's been uh it's like wide and well almost worldwide and so did you expect it to get this much coverage this much famous and are you like <sighs> proud that it's achieved this level uh absolutely and uh we had no idea that it was going to be well we didn't expect it to be anything like as popular we were we were going to be happy if it had like 10,000 downloads um and it's had a fair few more now. So yeah, we're really pleased with how it's gone. Um, we did feel like we kind of rushed out a bit, uh, but now we've kind of got the opportunity to work on it more and uh, get something out that's polished and has all the features in it that we didn't get around to doing the first time around. That's good. Uh, real quick, how many downloads does it have at the moment? Uh, I think on all platforms it's about uh, half a million, just over. Wow. So, yeah. And that's really, actually really very impressive. Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> how hard or complicated was it to create this game since? Um, well, there's lots of different uh, aspects to making it, and they they each have their own kind of difficult areas in themselves. I'd say possibly one of the hardest bits uh, with Wolf Tycoon wasn't the game itself; it was uh, the stuff that comes after making the game itself, which we completely underestimated how long it would take. Uh, we'd kind of had something playable at Halloween, and then that was after two weeks, and then it was a further four weeks until we had something that we could actually ship. And that was just making sure it worked on all the devices and making sure uh, it rendered properly and adding leaderboards and such. Um, so that was just a lot more work than I think you, either of us were expecting. It sounds even it, it sounds complicated to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, since it's based around Halloween, you have all of these like other fictional characters like zombies vampires all yetis i don't know if that counts really but all these other fictional characters why did you choose a werewolf uh i don't know i i think it was i just with the idea of the original the eyes peeking out of the bush i i just thought the contrast of having something massive with its ears poking out of this tiny little bush, that just that image was quite funny, and I think that was all. So I just wanted something big, and uh, I mean, werewolves can kind of be both monstrous and and kind of cute at the same time. Okay, I have to admit that is true. 
So, this game has been actually played by many people. Uh, I I am one. Just want to count myself in there. <laughs> um, but it's actually uh, been played and recorded and uploaded by a lot of uh, popular YouTubers, such as yeah. High, Touch Gameplay, Simple Gaming, just a few to get out there. It's are you impressed with that? And uh, yeah, watch the videos also. Oh <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I I've watched most of the most of the bigger ones. Uh, we we were actually joking around at Christmas, like, hey, do you know how cool it would be if PewDiePie played this, and just completely not even considering that that was ever going to happen. But uh, yeah, when it happened, it was quite exciting, and I think one of the things with uh, Werewolf Tycoon that made it easier for it to get around was the fact that it was easy to uh, do Let's Plays of because we'd released a Flash version as well and it seems the majority of Let's Players have recorded the Flash version which can just be played online um, but then in turn that's directed a lot of people to find it on their mobiles as well so I think that was definitely a good move not that it was intentional but it worked out do you brag? You have a whole lot of bragging rights, and do you even brag? <laughs> uh, uh, do I brag? Uh, probably. Uh, I don't know if I feel like I should, but... You know what? After this, you're gonna go out and you're gonna brag and feel like the Queen of England. Go. Just go. Just bask in the glory. <laughs> uh... Pretty much, uh, what aspects of the game did you have to cut out since uh, you rushed it in a way? Oh yeah, uh, there were things like we were going to have, well, multiple different kinds of people for a start. Mm -hmm. uh, it, well, actually we're going to be putting quite a few of these into the sequel, which we're currently talking about and planning for next Halloween. So some of these will actually make it into the game eventually. But there were things like having a transformation sequence at the start with uh, a story about a dog from an escaped laboratory peeing on the lamppost and that causing you to turn into a werewolf somehow. Uh, I don't know if we're going to return to anything like that, but that was one uh, one of the ideas that we threw out. Um, there were going to be multiple different kinds of people, people sitting on the bench, uh, a hot dog stand uh, with tourists coming with people with uh, the werewolf is real t-shirts and stuff, um, a maintenance guy who comes to fix the lamppost and you'd have to get him before you fix the lamppost, um, multiple locations and some kind of upgrade system or currency and the currency would have been meats or something. Loads of crazy ideas like this that, I yeah, know. just I, didn't didn't make it in. I love those ideas. I can't wait to see them in a second. <laughs> <clears throat> now, this is pretty much the most important question in the entire universe. Oh wow! PC, okay. Yeah, PC or console? <laughs> uh I have no preference. Am I allowed to say that? Yes, I I I'll, I okay. think I'll allow you. At the moment, <laughs> at the moment, I play PC more just because I don't have a console. But like last year, I did, and I was playing a ton on that as well. So, uh, whatever's whatever's convenient, whatever I've got the games on. You dabble in the dark arts, boy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um. But, uh, in your whole entire life, pretty much, have you ever cosplayed? Uh, no. I haven't. <laughs> that, is that something I've got to do now? Yes, it, it is. You have to cosplay as your werewolf now. Oh, I can do that. I've got a werewolf onesie. encourage you to do it <laughs> <laughs> I will I will <laughs> oh gosh mm, well did you play a game before uh, creating Werewolf Tycoon that may have inspired you a little bit perhaps 
Um, probably many, but subconsciously that I can't recall right now. Just because I've been doing research slash stalking yep. you, um, I have you created uh, any other games before World of Tycoon? Because I'm interested. Um, none that I've released with any kind of commercial uh, aspect to it. But I made well, I've been making games since I was about ten, and I've made loads of crappy little things, most of which are uh, unfinished. Uh. But in the last year, I've been doing the Ludum Dares, uh, which is a big game jam thing that happens uh, a few thousand entries normally with two parts to it. One part is uh, you make a game in 48 hours pretty much from scratch, all assets from scratch, all sound from scratch, solo. And then there's also alongside that, you can make a game in a team with pre-made assets um, and it's all based on a theme, so everyone's making a game based around this theme. And so I've done three of those this last year. Um, so I've got those games which are uh, out there to be played. They're pretty short and simple, seeing as they're made in 48 hours, but um, that's it for the time being. I do have one other project that I've been working on for a year that I haven't said much about yet. Um, and well, yeah, I've got several things in the works, but other than that, Are you pretty much excited about any upcoming games? Like, for instance, uh, Life is Strange 2 is coming up in later in this month. Are you... Upcoming games that I'm excited about. I'm, uh, I'm excited about a few games, mostly for their art. Um, I'm a big fan of pixel art, and there's a game called Chasm, uh, which is like a platform roguelike type thing with procedurally generated dungeons which just ha just has incredible pixel art in it and I know that when I play it I'll be just pausing every now and again to just examine it and look at how beautiful it is uh, there's another one called Owl Boy um, and that's also got well that's probably got some of the nicest art pixel art there's ever been in a game that I've seen so I'm quite excited about that as well creating games since you were 10 uh, what inspired you to create games why did you become a game developer um I don't know uh, I guess I always kind of liked uh, making things and just just anything and then learning to use like the the first game I ever made was in PowerPoint it was just something interactive something I could make and some something I could share with people and other people could mess around with it and uh, I think that that's just it it's just it kind of combines all the um, all the different kinds of things you can experience like you've got uh, visual and audio and like the story behind it and it's just got all these different aspects and it combines all of the all of them into this one uh kind of experience so yeah if i enjoy in, enjoy doing all the individual things it just kind of combines everything so i can do it all at once Comic-Con, Paxis, uh, everything like that. Uh, I do, but I don't go to many. I haven't been in, into one in a while, to be fair. Uh, sad. Just, just so sad. I, I want to. It's just, yeah. Probably, pro oh, probably Marvel. Good 
Um, mainly because of Spider-Man, but... Well, it's technically it's a, is a good choice. If if you choose yep. DC, I would have pretty much scorned you and okay. everything. Okay. <laughs> uh, are you really like a really big fan of gaming competitions and everything, competitive gaming? Uh, I'm not a big fan, uh, largely because I don't have time. But I got quite into a fairly small online risk game say fairly small uh, called Warlight which is pretty much risk but more complicated and I got quite serious about that for a while but um, other than that not really hmm. Ooh, uh, well were you an avid gamer as a child or did you just not mess with games and create your own. Uh, no, I played quite a lot. Uh, like most of the Final, well, Final Fantasy from seven to ten, and various Mario, Zelda, tons and tons of stuff on uh, Game Boy. I was playing games most of the time I can remember. I think when I was ten and a bit after so and yeah a little bit later I got completely hooked on RuneScape this is like two years before the 3D one back uh, back in classic and was playing that forever do you uh, play any league or World of Warcraft uh, nope thank god <laughs> <laughs> It's on. It, there, World of Warcraft is honestly not a bad game. It's just kind of. Yeah. It kind of gets the same simple after a while. But yep. League is just annoying to me, of course. Uh, some of my housemates played it pretty much. Well, it felt like 24 uh, 7 a couple of years ago, um, but I never really touched it. I did spend most of my time playing Call of Duty then, uh, but. I, yeah, I don't play games as much at the moment, just because I'm spending far more time working on making them. So, Generally, the games I do play tend to be smaller and things that have a finite point where they end, so I can put them down. since you are pretty much like almost a professional game developer, but was there anything else you wanted to do in life? Um, well, I kind of wanted to... I was going to just go into regular software, but I'd been wanting to do games way before that, and I'd kind of, for a period thought I was going to be happy just doing software and then during uni I was like no I definitely want to be doing games I'm also a magician though and I still do that professionally on the side sometimes not as much as when I was at uni uh, and I I just have too many interests and if I could I would do all of them uh, if I had time Magician. Yeah. Oh god, that is awesome. I'm gonna be stuck on that for the rest of the night. Um, <laughs> do you have a bucket list, like a proper bucket list? Oh man, not yet. No. You always have to prepare one. You, you never know what's gonna happen. Yeah. I'll I'll get on it. I'll get on it. Okay. Mm, are you very uh, sh uh excuse me social around people or are you just off to the side shy and everything like that uh i probably vary on a scale depending on who i'm with and what my mood is and whether i've slept the night before largely uh yeah i can either be pretty social and pretty crazy or very quiet and maybe not even there. Okay. Hmm. But, well, I guess, you know, go 
going back to childhood and everything. Yep. Uh, were you a wild child? Like, did you mess with the babysitter, um, spray paint, whatever? <laughs> I don't um, know. <laughs> no. Probably the opposite of that, to be honest. Are you I was. Jealous? I was quite good. I was all good, yeah. <laughs> well, you must have been your parents' little um, angel. Oh, except to my parents. What did you do to your parents? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was, I was okay. I was just, uh, I don't know. It's, it's hard to figure out what I was like. I, I was living it from my own perspective. Right? You'll have to ask the people I interacted with. Okay. Well, back to childhood again, apparently. Uh, <laughs> as a child, um, almost either everybody has like an Atari, a Game Boy, a yep. Nintendo old school nintendo do you have do you still have any of those uh today i i still have all of my old consoles uh ps two different ps ones uh a game boy pocket game boy color game boy advance um nintendo 64 um and still have most of the games for them as well i can see somebody as a high roller apparently oh goodness <laughs> <laughs> They were mostly secondhand, but. But to keep, are they still in? I guess what you would call good condition. Are they still um, playable? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, except some things like uh, my uh, Pokemon games. I think the batteries have gone in them. That keep the times so they don't play anymore. Um, but mostly, yeah, I tended to keep things in good condition, like a bit obsessively so okay. some of it still looks new <laughs> I'm actually jealous right now I'm sorry <laughs> I, the only thing I have still from my childhood is my Atari and yeah you can still play it and everything but I'm just so jealous <laughs> uh, I guess you're what is your favorite game series of all time? Just ultimate. Um, probably Kingdom Hearts. Um, which I didn't think I was even going to like at first. The Disney thing kind of put me off, but then I just I don't I don't know. It's just really love the style of the art and the story and the music and the yeah. That's cool. Ooh. Okay, so do you have any embarrassing, you know, memories when you were, you were in your high school years? Uh, ones that I, I'd like to share? <laughs> I guess it doesn't have to be too explicit, just... <laughs> no, I, I... I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I know. That, it, it was a too far fetched question. Anyway. <laughs> it's pretty vague. I, I could, uh, if you had uh, asked me that one in advance. Uh... Yeah. But I was saving like the best for last in everything. <laughs> but um, I guess I should ask what university did you uh, attend? I went to York to do a uh, master's in computer systems and software engineering. Uh, which didn't have much games in it until the end, where in my final year for my master's project, I made um, multiplayer networked, networked multiplayer Tetris, effectively consoles on FPGAs, so designing the hardware and making it hardware accelerated to make it energy efficient. It was a crazy project, but it was quite quite fun to do everything so low level and actually get uh, this networked multiplayer Tetris working. Oh my gosh. Oh, you went to your... Man, that is... It's impressive. I have to admit, that is very impressive. Hmm. I guess, going back to the game, uh, did you have a specific budget in creating this? 
Uh, yes, uh, specifically zero. Um, no budget. Man. And yeah, pretty much no money as well. That uh, before starting that, I was largely almost out of money because I'd I'd had some some savings that I'd earned before uni in my gap year. Uh, and then heard after finishing uni was trying to make games and s just without any money and now largely well I'm, I'm making some money now doing mostly from freelance stuff but um, it's actually finally become viable for me to keep doing it so after uh, just every year so have you made enough money to you know get comfortable and or are you just gonna make it rain every night in the strip club or is <laughs> Uh, no, um, I'm not at the point yet where I can just work on my own projects, uh, which is what I'd eventually like to be able to do. But at the moment, I still need to be doing the freelance stuff in order to uh, keep some income. Werewolf Tycoon hasn't made much money at all and hasn't paid for itself, to put it that way. It's made, it's made a bit now. But we really didn't go into it thinking it was going to be popular enough to make any money in the first place, so we didn't put any effort into the monetization side of it and so like the adverts are small very easy to ignore and we yeah so we did we also we just didn't want them to hinder the game experience at all so so the money we've made from werewolf tycoon has just kind of been a bonus but i think it's uh certainly paid for itself in terms of the experience and being able to just get something like that out there uh, and I think it's helped to get helped me to get some work as well uh, with freelancing. So, I guess should we be on the lookout for Werewolf Tycoon Two anytime soon? Yeah, uh, it's probably not going to be for a couple of months. We're probably not going to start for a couple of months still. Mm. Um, but when we do, which I think will be. Uh, at the beginning of June sometime we'll be starting uh, I'll be streaming the entire development uh, which is actually what I did with Werewolf Tycoon so at least for the first three weeks the bit where we were actually developing the game I streamed the whole thing and we're going to do that again but for a bit longer this time Cool. and that'll be around the start of June oh just in time for summer and everything like that so that's yep. really good and I can watch it when I'm not in school. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. But um, I guess what other things are you going to add to Werewolf Tycoon 2, if I should say? Uh, so the biggest things are going to be things like multiple locations. Uh, we're going to have uh, a bit more, well, many more jokes, lots more uh, Easter eggs and just silly things. Multiple locations. We're gonna have the world, the wolf, pretty much going on a, a world tour, uh, taking over the world eventually. Um, going to popular locations and having multiple different kinds of people, having multiple places to hide, more kind of strategies, more things to have to watch out for, and also some kind of upgrades and customization of your wolf as you're going through it. Sounds very exciting. Can't wait uh, for it. I mm, guess that is everything. Uh, I'm excited uh, for you to be on here. Uh, let me interview you and everything. It was very fun. Uh, oh, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, check Joe Williamson out on Twitter uh, at Joe Creates. Uh, do you have any other social media? Um, my Facebook is Facebook slash Joe Creates as well. Uh, although I just get my Twitter to forward to that, so. Um, and my website is joecreates.co.uk. Okay. Well, uh, pleasure having you, and I. Man, I can't wait for Werewolf Tycoon 2. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, well, until next time, guys. Hope all of you have a good thing. Bye. <laughs>